Good morning, YouTube. It's uh, Saturday morning, uh, the 9th, and today I get to leave the apartment. <laughs> I get to come out of the compound and go for a ride in my gay looking little scooter with May. And we've got some missions to accomplish today. We've got a couple of stores and we need to go to and deliveries that we need to make. And those are not for ourselves. Those are actually for Bay's family. Um, one confession I'll make here right off the bat is the longer I live out here, the less impressed I am with myself. <laughs> <laughs> you bounce through life, you think you're a, you're a good guy, and you do this and you do that. But um, I found myself uh, kind of complaining a bit with fellow expats, or just to myself in general, um, about this quarantine deal and the little bit of inconvenience that I've got uh, from it. And... Uh, the fact that I can't go to a coffee shop and sit down and enjoy an overpriced latte or something like that. And uh, it came to light <clears throat> that in conversations with May that her youngest sister, uh, Riza, lost her husband last week to cancer. Um, he's 24 years old. And they have three kids. Um, they have a two-year-old named Nika and they have two twin boys and I love the boys names they're seven months old and their names are junior and senior <laughs> does it get any better <laughs> and uh, what amazed me and where I had to do like an ego gut check is that when this came to light is May didn't come out and announce it to me. Hey, by the way, my, my brother-in-law died. It was like we were talking about something totally different, and then she just told me. And I'm like, why didn't you say something about that to me? And she said, well, I didn't want to bother you with it. And I thought, wow. You know, you can share these things with me. And she goes, yeah, I know. She says, but, you know, I don't want, I don't want you to think that, you know, you're responsible for this or that or the other. And I thought, wow, you know, there's... Whenever I, I, I experience that, that type of character in a person, it really illuminates and puts a bright light on my character flaws. Uh, here I am whining and moaning to myself, not loudly. <laughs> But still doing it about, you know, the lockdown and how it's getting old and we're getting bored and this and that and the other. And although I know that there are people out there suffering, uh, especially like in the States and stuff like that and here in the Philippines uh, due to the quarantine, um, my complaints are nothing on the Richter scale. And... Then I get this announcement from May, not even an announcement, it was more like it came out of casual conversation. And so this comes off the heels of another brother-in-law that died back in December on her, um, with her eldest sister. And um, they have a kid together also. And May did not go to either funeral and I asked her, and so that's, I guess that's one of the reasons why it never came up, because she never, she never had to go anywhere. And I said, well, why didn't you go, you know, to support your sisters at these, at these times? And she says, no, nah. she says, I'm scared. I'm really, she is, she's superstitious. And she was scared to see someone dead. And she said it would give her nightmares. And I just asked her like an hour ago, um, before I did this video, I said, aren't your sisters like pissed off that you didn't, you know, come out and see them or hurt or whatever? They said, no, they completely understand. And um, so, you know, hats off to May and hats off to her family. Um, we did a video on May's little channel 
a few days ago where we where may I think mention this whole thing about her um, her sister losing losing her husband and the three kids and um, the sister worked as an online seller and that happens a lot out here where people will buy stuff you know clothes or cosmetics or shoes or whatever and they kind of buy it in bulk and then they lay it out and they they, they sell it online for a markup and um, the husband I forgot what he did oh he was a janitor he worked as, worked as a janitor they had met in Manila and then they couple three years ago um, she got pregnant they moved back out here to the Dumaguete type of area actually they live in a place called Chateau which is about an hour from here where May comes from <clears throat> and now May showed me a picture of the twins which is just as cute as can be I wish I could put it up here but I don't know how and I'll probably go out there and do a video one day of the kids and stuff because I, I really want to see them and meet them but there's the twins are just sitting in a little cardboard box and uh, I said wow that's really cute you know I said is that, is that what they play in they play in their little box she goes no that's what they sleep in <laughs> now I'm not laughing because it's it's funny I'm just laughing because of how one minute I'm complaining that I don't you know have my my hot latte and and my 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 dessert or whatever and here is a woman that's lost her husband she can no longer do any online selling they're living with May's mom who lives a very simple barren type of life with you know no air conditioning and stuff like that hot as hell right now and um, uh, no one's complaining there's just no complaining coming out of the sisters or the mother or a may they're just dealing with it it just is what it is and so um, what happened when we did the video with may a couple of days ago is a few guys picked up on it and donated some money to May. so thank you guys you know who you are um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to take one donation and we're going to go to a place called Marcos and buy diapers and milk and formula. And another sister, Jing, is going to take that to Chateau. It's a long involved story with these girls. I always get confused with the names and whatnot. But anyway. Um, and I asked May, I said, well, why don't we just send the money the, that the guy donated and let her buy the diapers and the formula there instead of having this big box of stuff that Jing's got to try to transport on the bus when she goes over to see him one day. And she said, well, no. She said, uh, Marcos is like half price, which is true. We have discovered this little sorry, sorry store out here that a couple of months ago that's cheaper than Hypermart, definitely cheaper than Robinson's. And according to May, um, Chateau is this little, um, this little barangay, if you will. And it's, I guess it just doesn't have the, the value to, to items like that. Uh, it's, it's kind of, they've got kind of a captured audience, if you will. There's no competition. It's so small. And so May, being May, being the budget conscious little chick that she is, decided that it's better for us to do a little legwork, go out and buy the diapers, buy the milk and all that. And then another guy sent some money. I think he sent $100. You know who you are. I owe all you guys emails and every time I try to do it, my computer fades out. So they're coming anyway, but don't let me get off the story. Um, the thank you emails are coming. Um, but so there's going to be 5,000 pesos that we're also going to be able to pack and send off to the family. Um, I guess the moral of this little video is the longer that I live out here, the more I realize 
just how much I'm discovering, uh, not only about myself, but about people in general. And, I, I, you know, I, I tend to watch the news and I watch the politicians and I watch the bickering and I watch the fighting and I listen to the expats and I listen to the demons in my own head. And sometimes my whole attitude gets almost into, not depressed, but just kind of cranky and just kind of like, yeah, you know, everything's shitty and this is bad and that's bad. And then when this massive tragedy happens, I call it a massive tragedy, uh, of losing a spouse, a young kid, 24 years old, prime of his life, dies of cancer, leaves behind a 22-year-old a uh, beautiful wife, which is May's younger sister, with three beautiful children, and their character is so strong, and none of this nonsense that I'm worrying about affects them whatsoever. They just persevere, they just soldier on, and not one of them has asked for anything from me or from anybody else, for what I can tell. And so these gifts that we will send them are going to be truly appreciated. And I can promise you that they will, they will utilize those a lot better than I would have. I don't know about you, but you know, if you got some found money, like I'm griping because I haven't got my stimulus check yet. And that would be found money. Well, what would I do with that? You know, I'd probably just take a little away on something silly. Maybe I'd put it in a savings account. I don't know. But at the end of the day, when that stimulus check comes, if it ever comes, um, I think I know what direction I'm going to send it in. I think I know where I would get the most bang for my buck. You know what I mean? Um, Again, the longer that I live out here, the more I realize that as a spoiled American, I was more concerned about the latest and greatest flat screen TV. And instead, there's kids over here that are sleeping in a box. And I guess the only thing they're going to need in the future is a bigger box when the kids get older. So I've managed to put that into perspective. I don't know if any of this makes sense to you guys. It's just sort of a, a train of thought that I'm having, and I thought I would share it, because the reason I record all these videos is, uh, unfortunately, guys, it's not for you. <laughs> it's for me, man. This is for me to look back on and remember my station in life and where I'm at today on uh, May 9th, 2020, at 7 o'clock in the morning here in the Philippines. And maybe next time I get cranky or feeling sorry for myself, I'll flip this video back on and think about it. So um, anyway, I think that what we would request for those of faith is for prayers. Prayers for um, Riza, the prayers for Junior and the Senior, and Nika, the little two-year-old, for May's mom, for May's family. Um, we will soldier through this. Um, I, I was listening to a guy yesterday that, that was complaining about this woman he met that had built him out of all kinds of money and, and used and abused him, you know. And as I listened to his story, I thought, yeah, that's a typical story. I hear that a lot. And then I say my blessings for the fact that I have, you know, been blessed with a woman like May who has never asked for anything uh, other than my attention. And so I hope that you guys are doing okay under the quarantine. I know that there are some, <clears throat> some serious things going on with you guys too. Um, and, and May and I pray for you on those, on those things. I know that, that, that little Riza and, and the kids are not the only ones that are having a hard time. There's people out there with similar situations. No money, uh, no income, um, no checks in the mail because they've got it screwed up or whatever. So, you know, let's all go forward together. Let's soldier through this. And 
let's, you know, for me, I'm going to try to just remember what's really important. All right, guys, I will talk to you on the next video.